So we have a lot of API gateways, but in this video series we are going to focus on Kong API gateway, which even in its free version, it provides us a lot of free tools that are really useful for high scales and I really recommend you use them. So stick with me to learn more about this concept and have a total overview of what an API gateway is. So before jumping to Kong API Gateway, we have to first know what an API Gateway is. So I found this definition that really explains what an API Gateway is all about. So as it is saying, an API Gateway is an API management tool that sits between a client and a collection of backend services. So I'm going to highlight this collection and later I'm going to explain more about this. So an API gateway acts as a reverse proxy to accept all application programming interface calls, aka API calls, and aggregate various services required to fulfill them and returns the appropriate result. So in theory, this is a really good tool to use, but in action it is a little bit complicated. But there are no worries, we are going to handle all this step by step and for our first step i have some pictures that i want to explain in a schematic way so this is our client apps we have a application in a microservices architecture and we have a web interface and a mobile application so the correct place for the api gateway is between the client and all our microservices and in a network view, the port of the API gateway only gets exposed to the outside world without exposing each of the microservices ports to the outside. So this is one of the advantages that the API gateway gives for us. So in this picture, we have a single point of entry and if ever we change the IP and port for our microservices, client won't know the change. The only change that we need to make is in our API gateway. So we have to change the configuration for the... So for example, if we need to change the IP for the catalog microservice, the only thing that we need is change the configuration on the API gateway side and define the new IP that gets assigned to the new microservice. So this is one design and in another design we can have multiple API gateways for multiple interfaces that we have on the client side. For example, for the web application we can have a separate API gateway, another one for mobile application and another one for example if ever our application has some APIs that the third-party applications use. So as we see here, our microservices can handle REST APIs and gRPC connections and our API gateway should be handling both connections. And also, if ever there are other protocols for connecting to our backends, the API gateway should be handling that and translate the HTTP request that comes from the client to the relevant connection that the exact backend can handle. So this is a total overview of what API gateways are. It has a lot of advantages. Also, it has some disadvantages. For example, we are adding another layer that can cause us a little bit more latency. And maybe another one can be that we have a single point of failure, which will force us to also replicate our API gateways and have multiple API gateways. For, for example, the web application, if one of them gets down by any reason, the others will be handling the requests and gets the responses from the backend services and sends back the data to the client. So of course this has meaning in architectures like microservices or SAs or other similar architectures and I recommend before using the API gateway you know about all the advantages and disadvantages that it gives for us. So as I said in the beginning of the video we are going to focus on the Kong API Gateway on this video series 
and we are going to deploy it using docker in a standalone mode and we are going to deploy it in a db list mode aka declarative mode and later in the next videos we are going to test out its plugins that it gives for us which are listed in this web page that i'm going to put the link down in the comment section so let's not jump ahead of us and first try to deploy this in the docker environment as a docker container using a docker compose so if you don't know what docker is I'll put the link to my video in which I tried to explain a little bit and I really recommend you read the documentations in its web page because it is a cool thing to use when deploying the necessary tools. But if you don't know about Docker, I'll try to explain a little bit also in this video. So no worries, let's get into work. So to get started, I recommend you clone my repository in which I'll put all the configurations that we create in this video series and also the other codes and configuration files for other videos that I have in my channel and I recommend you watch them. So to get started, I am going to create a directory called config and I'll cd into the config directory and in here I'll try to create a kong.yaml file which is going to hold the configurations to the kong gateway. So basically the config file is where we define our upstream servers and plugins that can be applied to a route, to a service or globally. So no worries, I'll explain all these step by step so the first thing in here i am going to declare my format version this is common in all yaml files that declares the version of the yaml file and the next thing i am going to start by declaring my services block so i'll say services and i'll start to declare my services so the first service I'll pass the name, I'll pass the echo server as the value, I'll pass the URL for the service, so I'll say URL is equal to the upstream server's exact IP and port. So the next thing I am going to need to give this service a route, so I'm going to say route, again I am going to pass a name, so I'll say dash name i'll pass echo as the value next i'm going to define the path for the exact service that i'm defining right now so the next thing i'm going to define the paths for this service and i'll pass it slash echo as the value for the path so this is my initial and basic configuration to pass to the Kong gateway so I'll save my file and I'll exit if I hit ls I'll make sure my config file has been created so I'll cd a directory back and in here I'll try to create a docker compose file so again it is a yaml file and basically in this file we are going to define our services that we want the docker engine to pull the relevant images and create our services which in our case is the kong api gateway so again the first thing that i want to declare is the version of this yaml file and the next i am going to create the services block the one and only service that i want to have is kong gateway so the first thing that i need to say is the image which will be kong next i need to mount my config file inside the relevant directory inside the container so i am going to need to say volumes and pass the config file location as the value inside the container so i'll say dot slash config and by saying a colon i'm going to define the location that my config directory should be placed inside the container so next i'm going to need to pass some environment variables so i'll copy paste some 
variables from the official documentations. So for example, the Kong database is off because we are using the declarative mode. The config file location should be exactly the same that we passed our config file inside the container and some other variables that, as I said, I copied from the official documentations of the Kong in the Docker website. So next we need to define the ports to be interacting with this service from the outside world. So we need to expose some ports to the outside so we can have interactions with the container that is running in the Docker. So I'm going to save my file and so I'll hit save and exit. And now all I need to do is say docker compose up and this is going to first pull the image from the docker hub registry if I don't have the relevant image. But because I have already pulled the image it is not going to download the image and use the local image that i downloaded and because of that this is going to be up and running in seconds so if it takes a little bit longer for you just let it do what it has to do so as we see i have my kong gateway up and running and listening on the ports that I defined in the docker compose file so i'm going to access the kong gateway in the in my browser so I'll say localhost 8000 and in here I see that the message that it returns is saying no route matched with the values that I passed to my request so if I add the slash echo at the end so I'll see that the response is coming from the upstream service which is the echo server that is running in its own port and so the Kong gateway successfully goes and grabs the response from the upstream server and shows me as the client whatever the response that the upstream server is returning to the Kong. So we have successfully created our first service in the Kong and also we created Kong gateway in a docker environment and this is all for this video and in the next videos we'll try to dive deeper in the Kong gateway, use its plugins and more complicated configs. So that's all for this video and do not forget to watch the next episodes of this video series. So thanks for watching, I hope you learned something new in this video and also please do like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next videos.